Cornwall for Petiti Garden Centers and we're outside on a great day, um, late summer here. And um, I wanted to show you all these great ornamental grasses. Um, you can do so much with ornamental grasses in the landscape. They're drought tolerant, they're disease and insect resistant. And really um, the deer don't like them, the bunnies don't like them. So there's a really, a great reason to use those right off the top there. Um, the most common family of grasses that you see is usually what they call Japanese silver grass. Um, it's, the botanical name is called Miscanthus. And Miscanthus comes in all shapes and sizes. So these three that you see right here, here, and here, they're all in that family. They're all very hardy, really easy to grow, you know, easy for even for the black thumb. Um, you dig them in a sunny spot. Uh, you don't even really need to fertilize them. I probably shouldn't say that, but they really don't need a lot of care. Maybe a little bit of watering or the rainfall will take care of it, and they'll grow and they'll do their thing. Now, most of the time, the miscanthus are the latest blooming. So right now, you don't see them with any of their flowering plumes on them, but they will eventually develop later in the fall. So this tall one with the, the straight green blades, this is called gigantus, okay? So this is one of our tallest, uh, Japanese silver grasses. As you can see, if you need some height for a screen, great grass to grow. Um, this one right here and the banding is very popular. So these yellow dots that you see on the foliage, that's all what we call banding. And the yellow dots, this one is very uh, straight and upright. This is actually your porcupine grass, but there's zebra grass and some other uh, very popular varieties that are also banded, but might have a different form to them. So porcupine grass is really straight upright. This one down below is called Little Kitten, and Little Kitten has a very fine blade of grass to it, really pretty in the landscape, low growing, kind of makes an edger, or it looks really pretty in a pot just by itself and Little Kitten doesn't get any more than about three foot tall. So as you can see, they're all very different in this family. Now the next one that I love is the switchgrass family. This is also known as Panicum. This particular variety that I have here is called Shenandoah. Shenandoah is one of my favorite. Gets about three and a half, four foot tall with the, the foliage, and then you see these beautiful seed-like clusters on the top. That's actually a panicle, and these panicles are so showy and beautiful uh, late summer, fall, even through the winter. So do look for the switchgrass. Again, they're native, so they're very, very easy to grow um, in our clay soils. You can put them in partial shade and they'll still do well. Um, so easy one with that family. And there's lots of different varieties with that one too. The one in front of me is real popular. This is um, a fountain grass or what we call penicetum. And penicetum, there's annual varieties. So annual meaning you have to plant them every year. Um, and normally those are the real dark sort of maroon red leaves that you see out there. And they have these same kind of bottle brush flowers. Well, this is a hardy one. This one's called Little Bunny. And Little Bunny is really cute, compact, beautiful bottle brush flowers at this time of year. And again, really looks great in the landscape all the way through winter. And with all these grasses, you cut them down in the early spring, okay? So try the fountain grass family, really, really nice. Lots of varieties here too. Now behind me, this is actually a feather reed grass. And feather reed grass is also known as Calamagrostis. And they are the earliest bloomers. So you can tell their seed heads are already starting um, shedding a little bit because they start to bloom in June. So they are gonna be uh, one of your earliest bloomers, really, really showy. Um, there's several different varieties. This one actually is called Overdam. Overdam has a wonderful variegated leaf. It's kind of short on the grass, maybe two foot tall. And then you get those nice feather reed clusters that come up from it. So it's really pretty and very ornamental. Uh, the most popular one in this family is called Carl Forster. So if you ever hear that name, you'll know what we're talking about with the feather reed grass. This one's kind of new on the scene. This is what we call a little blue stem. Little blue stem is also a native grass. Um, as you can tell, this one's twilight zone and it's got this beautiful sort of minty green, blue, steely blue, and then has this purple lavender tips. It's really a cool little grass, kind of on the short side, maybe two and a half, three foot tall, and then it will bloom later. 
And when it achieves its fall color, it'll be golden orange. It's really a neat grass in the fall. So look out for this one too. Those are the little blue stuff. Good native. I also have some shorties back here. So we've got our Japanese blood grass. This is called Red Baron. Japanese blood grass is one of the shortest grasses out there. Beautiful lower golden foliage, uh, sort of chartreuse green. Ooh, as the wind is blowing everything over. Ah, there it goes. And of course these red tips. I'm gonna pick this up. So the red tips on top. Japanese blood grass does not get very tall in the landscape at all. And this is one of the few grasses that I've rarely seen bloom before, okay? So just a foliage interest here, but really showy. And then if you want something short and tufted as everything blows over, this is our little blue fescue. Blue fescues, uh, this variety is called Elijah Blue. And it is, it's just a short little tufted grass, little blue mound. Um, you can cut it back again in early spring, let it fill out again. And it really gets no more than about eight inches that you see here. So blue fescue, Elijah Blue is a nice little short one for edges and so forth. It really likes to be on very well-drained soil, um, you know, for an edger. So keep it out in the sun for sure. Okay, well, if you wanna check out more grasses, please visit us at petitegardencenter.com and you'll see a lot more at our stores as well. Enjoy.